welcome to our cardiac assessment lesson. You can find this on pages 18 and 19 in your nurse workbook 2.0. You can go ahead and print the page below this video so you can always come back and test your knowledge or fill it out with me again as well. The purpose of this video is to give you additional education beyond this nurse workbook, but real world nursing education as well. And we wanna keep the theme of this assessment module series. So as we're assessing our patients, we want to do that systematic assessment approach. So we're going to always look at our ABCs, this airway, breathing, circulation. Our last lesson, we did our A and our B, our respiratory assessment. So now we're on to our C. So now that we have oxygenated blood because our airway is patent and we're breathing well, we need to circulate all of this oxygen rich blood around the body. So this is known as our perfusion. So perfusion is oxygen that we're providing to our tissues and our organs by our blood. And we're gonna go so deep into this in future lessons. But the point of this cardiovascular assessment is how do we do this whole detailed assessment on our cardiovascular system? Because this isn't just what affects our heart, this even is affecting our extremities and our peripherals that they're getting great perfusion or circulation as well. So first we're gonna look at our eight peripheral pulse points and some of these pulses we're gonna feel better than others. It's important to remember that any pulse we feel is an artery that we're feeling because veins do not have a palpable pulse. But why would it be important that we're getting pulses in all areas of the body? So for instance, if our patient had broke their shin or their tibula or fibula, we can check the pulse points above the fracture site, which is going to be this popliteal pulse we're gonna go over. And we also wanna check our pulse below it because if there's any compromise of blood flow or compromisation of circulation or this perfusion, this oxygen rich blood, then our tissue below it can die. And we definitely don't want that to happen. So it's important that we know where we can assess these pulse points. So when our patients have any injuries, we can make sure that they're having good adequate perfusion. Our first pulse point is going to be our carotid pulse. So this is gonna be the artery that you're feeling in the neck. We also have our brachial artery or brachial pulse point, and this is gonna be in the upper arm of our patient. And this is our gold standard of where we're gonna to wanna to check our pulses on our infants and babies. So we can put their arm up above their head here, use two fingers and push into their upper arm. And we wanna count our pulse, but we can easily do this by counting it in 15 second intervals and multiplying it by four. However, we never want to do this when it comes to respirations, and we'll get into that later. Our next pulse point can be our abdominal aorta, and this is going to be really important if we suspect a potential aortic aneurysm, and we'll talk about that in our cardiac module. So if you see the stomach is pulsating, this is a not a good sign. And of course, in a skinny patient, this could be harmless because there's not a lot of fat to cover up this aortic pulse. Our radial pulse is going to be found in our wrist. And this is kind of a standard pulse that we can take while our patients are laying in the gurney and we can always walk up to the bedside and go ahead and squeeze their wrist. We're looking for this radial artery. And I will admit that not every patient has the same anatomy. And sometimes when you go to feel that radial pulse in your patient's wrist, it might not be always as present. So if you slide over to the ulna, you can also sometimes feel a better pulse over there. So you're gonna take your first fingers and your thumb and you're gonna squeeze onto that wrist and hold it down and feel for that pulse. And if not, I always head over to that other side and sometimes I can always feel it better over there. And this femoral pulse is kind of one of my favorite places that you can check and hold in the middle of a code or trauma. So you can do this by pushing your first and third finger down in the notch of the patient's groin. You can always get a Doppler and push it down in there too and listen for any heartbeat or any activity. The beautiful thing about this also is that when you have a Doppler that you're pushing down into the groin and listening for a pulse, the entire room can hear it as well. So if there's no sounds, we don't have a pulse, but if you hear the sounds, then everyone can hear how strong or potentially thready this pulse is. And our popliteal pulse is the pulse that's located behind the knee. It can be found by having the patient lay down, sit with their knee bent and relax their leg muscle. Then you can use your fingers to push up in the center of the area behind the knee to find the pulse. 
And this spot sometimes takes a little bit of maneuvering to find this pulse, but you can also use that Doppler to try to find it as well. Moving on down is our posterior tibial pulse, and this is located on the back of the ankle. So this is great for assessing our circulation to our lower leg and our foot. This can be done by sitting with the foot slightly elevated and relaxing our leg muscles, and we place our fingers on the inner side of the ankle just behind that ankle bone. And lastly is our dorsalis pedis. This is found on top of our patient's foot and it's typically used to assess the blood flow down to this foot. So we place our fingers on the top of the foot just above the first and second toe and roughly in line with the extension of the big toe. And this pulse point is super helpful, not just in trauma where we're worried about our circulation to the foot, but also in our diabetics, our peripheral artery disease, or anything that we think there's an impaired vascular vascular blood flow. So when these patients have these diseases, that blood has a harder time sometimes reaching all the way down to these extremities because of gravity. It's not doing a good job coming back up either. So this is a great way to test our patient's circulation. So now we're going to get into the bigger details of our cardiovascular assessment. And we're going to start off with that inspection. We're going to look at something known as our precordium. So this is the region of the chest wall that overlies the heart and the lower part of the thoracic cavity. So this is the area on the front of the chest where that heart is located. And it includes the space where you can feel the heartbeat most prominently. So this precordium is where we listen to our heart sounds with our stethoscopes. When we're inspecting this or looking at it, we're gonna look for any lifts or heaves, and essentially this is just fancy words for anything that's notable or exaggerated in the rise and fall of the chest when the person is breathing or visible pulsations. We're gonna look at the skin color, and this can be done beyond the precordium. Is there any pallor or cyanosis, diaphoresis that can indicate a compromised circulation? Our patients that are having a full-out heart attack or a STEMI can appear really dusky and gray because of this circulation impairment. And we're going to be inspecting our extremities. We're going to look for any peripheral edema, meaning swelling or fluid in our extremities, especially in our lower legs. Is there any JVD in the neck that could indicate poor heart dysfunction? Then we'll move on to our palpation. So we're gonna palpate these pulse points that we just talked about. We're gonna feel for the rhythm and the strength at these points and at that precordium site. If there's any thrills or vibrations that we feel in this chest wall. And then we're going to auscultate the area. So we wanna listen for our heart sounds. Do we hear any murmurs or any clicks or potential rubs? And the more you continue to listen to your patient, the more you're gonna be able to pick up on what is different or unique from that classic lub dub that you're always going to hear. So there are four points that we wanna put our stethoscope up to. This first point is gonna be our aortic valve. So this is gonna be found at the second intercostal space at the right sternal border. Our second auscultation spot is gonna be listening for our pulmonary valve. And this is located at the second intercostal space at the left sternal border. Our third location is listening for our tricuspid valve. And this is at the fourth intercostal space at the left sternal border. And lastly, we're going to listen for our mitral valve, and this is going to be located at the fifth intercostal space at the left midclavicular line. And like most of our videos, we want to always cover our anatomy. So you can go ahead and pause the video here and you can fill this out yourself. And you can also go a step further if you're already a little bit familiar with this and use your blue pen to reference our deoxygenated blood areas of this anatomy and your red pen to indicate your oxygenated blood in this part of the anatomy. You can continue to play this video so you can see the answers, but we're gonna go deep into this cardiac anatomy along with its circulation in our cardiac module. This concludes our cardiovascular assessment lesson. I will see you in the next one.